Right, well, this, if you don't already recognise it, is the driving dog that uh, fits onto the end of the motor that uh, drives the gearbox for the lathe. Now, the original motor uh, was a 10 horsepower beast which I had to remove because uh, I would have had to have bought an expensive converter to power it and also probably upgraded the entire supply to the garage to handle the extra current so that wasn't an option so what I eventually decided was I was going to get a, a really beefy single phase motor knowing that it would be nowhere near 10 horsepower that's for sure well, what I managed to find at the time was a 3 horsepower motor um, now the original diameter for the motor was 35 millimeters and that was for the 10 horsepower motor now the new motor the single phase one uh, its shaft was only 24 millimeters in diameter so I had to make this shim now there were a few complications involved uh, the first one was if I can zoom in a little bit uh, without it blurring this was the original key uh, for the old motor that had to be reused so that um, the shim would, wouldn't rotate inside the coupling uh, and to cut that slot in the outside of the shim is actually very simple you mount the uh, bar uh, as it stands, it probably wouldn't have been drilled by that time. Oh, would it? Yes, it probably would, actually. Um, you mount the bar horizontally in a couple of V-blocks uh, on the milling machine table, and you just simply pass an end mill a few times over this, and you've cut your slot in about 5-10 minutes. Now, the internal key is a lot different. That's much more complicated. Uh, I don't have a key seating machine and I don't even have a slotting head for the Bridgeport Mill um, they are very rare and if you were to find one even second hand uh, it would also be extremely expensive uh, but a worthwhile attachment if you were to do these kind of things on a regular basis but I think if I ended up buying one it would be an extremely expensive one trick wonder because um, it's not exactly as versatile as a shaper and it's a big bulky thing uh, to have laying on the back of your the Bridgeport Ram so I ended up making a contraption that cut this slot uh, manually bit by bit over a very long period of time and it was a lesson learned that I would never probably want to do it again but I think I'm going to have to um, because the new motor shaft has a diameter of 28 millimeters now that poses quite a few problems A. I can't use this shim again because this bore is 24 secondly this original key um, does actually only leave about a millimeter of steel left um, in the shim and as the 28 millimeter diameter would uh, need the thickness of these walls to decrease by two millimeters uh, this is only about a millimeter at the most so the motor shaft would actually interfere with the key uh, so that's not a great deal of fun um, so clearly I need to make a new shim uh, that would obviously involve making a new slot <laughs> a new slot for the uh, key for the new motor that's a given, I'm going to have to do that no matter what happens but there still lies the problem of this key here getting in the way of the new motor so there is some suggestion that maybe I ought to ignore this key slot do away with that and have a new key somewhere else cut um, say maybe at one of the sides either here or the opposite side 
and have a new key that would allow the 28mm shaft for the new motor and would also allow a new slot to be cut into here and it all gets very complicated. The other theory is that because I tried to employ the idea of not wanting this to come out at any time um, and therefore I heated this up uh, to a rather high temperature and then pressed this shim in with the vise as it was cooling down uh, it would have been nice to have done that in about two or three seconds but of course with the screw thread of a, a vise it takes about a minute and I must have got this thing in, in about three quarters of the way and it was cooling so rapidly that it became almost impossible to get the rest of it in so one vivid memory of me putting this shim in several years ago was that it was very unlikely that I would get the down thing out again uh, now I have actually tried that um, I had a pin going through here which had a bit of a, a head on it which was a little bit wider than here but not as wide as the inside of this ring and then the other end of this shim is this slightly larger diameter and so there'll be a, a seat or an edge to this which means that this that would have had to have been pushed through from this side and once this edge got to here that was it it was never going to come out again unless it came back out the same way uh, I put a piece of scaffolding pole over here which was about two inches long hoping that I could you know, when the pin and the scaffolding pole were pressed together the shim would come out um, which is effectively also saying that the coupling was pushed off the shim but god blimey even with a really large vice I couldn't budge this shim so I don't think I'm going to be able to use any of this coupling again now the good news is that I, despite turning the garage upside down I did actually find the original metal coupling uh, connector See, obviously the the lathe dogs fit in there, and this is the one for the motor. So, you know, one bit of steel uh, where it couples them both. I decided not to use that when I fitted the single phase motor because I thought, well, I'm not really sure about the alignment, and I don't know whether I would get them to fit together successfully. So I ended up making a rubber version of this thing, um, which wasn't. Um, the best idea but it did quieten things down a bit and it would allow the um, motor shaft to be slightly out of alignment without damaging this uh, or the one on the lathe motor so if I can't use this um, for a number of reasons that I've said earlier uh, namely the, the key getting in the way and not being able to press this shim out then I would have to make an entirely new one of these and it will probably be out of that block of steel there now that is about four and a half inches in diameter this peculiar set of beasts are neither four inches in diameter or a hundred mil it's slightly over four inches it's something like a hundred and five mil or maybe slightly less so it's a really a peculiar dimension but that doesn't matter um, that's big enough for the job and also thick enough uh, the original thing was from where my thumb is to here. My shim just added an extra length to it, which was probably required uh, due to the motor plate uh, moving the motor further away from where this should have been. So that thing should be big enough whoops, to create a new one out of and of course I'll still have to cut an internal key slot like I did in this shim but at least it will be custom made for the new motor um, this is obviously an off cut to get rid of this yeah, uh, in a big steel works so I'm imagining this was a very long 
steel billet and the saw that cut it off managed to get it quite square um, with these edges so um, I think I'll probably rely on that actually so instead of being able to put this in a lathe and just slowly but surely skim this edge off so it's nice and flat so I can start working with it uh, I think what I'll do is I'll lie it flat in the milling machine and pass some kind of fly cutter or multiple tooth cutter which tends to make a slightly better job actually and very very slowly take this edge down until it's a nice surface or a square surface clamping it down will be interesting because there's no flat edge on here um, so yeah that's going to be uh, very interesting to get that to work but uh, once we've got two square edges uh, we can think about putting it in the lathe and or even just keep it in the miller machine and doing everything in there boring out the centre uh, we obviously mill round like that to create this external piece or this protrusion or extrusion and um, we'd have to mill these out as well so effectively uh, there's one of these in there somewhere and we just got to get rid of all the metal that's in the way as easy as that sounds it will be a big job well she's milled down nice and flat now uh, no bother at all with this uh, four tooth cutter very nice but she's a lump of iron you'd think by now I could tell the difference between iron and steel but apparently not uh, so yeah fantastic I've got iron flour everywhere now which I've got to clean up um, you can see all the milling marks on it actually it's quite a smooth finish but oh god look at all this powder everywhere I, I certainly can't leave this behind that's got to be cleaned off immediately I did think about filming the milling but uh, I didn't think it would take as little time as it did because I thought we were in for an hour or so's job with it being a piece of steel but no, iron, soft as anything should be okay for the job though, hopefully fingers crossed well a lot of time has passed couple of months it's a bit warmer in the garage these days uh, we're looking at double figures at least so it's a lot more comfortable to be in here and I've gone ahead and made the uh, new coupler uh, I started out with one piece of what turned out to be a lump of iron not steel and turned that down I didn't do any filming unfortunately it was just a bit too cold in the garage to do anything other than the work that was required without fiddling around with a video camera at the same time. Uh, I should have really zoomed out and showed the original. If I can do that. Put that side by side. You can see they look very similar. And here's the old one with the shim in there. And the old key from the motor that used to come. I originally came with the motor. There's only a tiny amount of metal left there and this was to accommodate a 24 mil shaft well I've had to make a new one uh, with a 28 millimeter shaft in mind you can see there's a little gap there well that's nothing too bad and uh, that's just because that would have been on end when they milled the channel out so it obviously got a flat edge now uh, this was originally I was going to make the whole thing out of a piece of uh, well I thought it was steel but it turned out to be iron cause dust everywhere but it turned out that it was iron and when I originally bored the hole through this piece ended up making it a couple of thou too big which uh, spells disaster really so I thought well rather than do away with that it's the right diameter uh, I may as well use it so after that all I did was just make this piece in the middle bored this out to a larger diameter and made this piece which is actually steel which I'm happy about and it just goes through to the back and you can see that it's obviously two different diameters and this original iron piece here under my thumb 
um, slides very closely over uh, this diameter here and then I just bolted it to it with a couple of a few bolts uh, these are only stainless steel so for some reason I was under the impression that they would be the stronger of all the bolts but of course they're actually weaker uh, than the high tensile bolts and I think it's supposed to be weaker than the 8.8 uh, .8 bolts as well which is quite surprising uh, they won't rust but they may be weaker than everything else so these may get replaced by some 10.9s or 12.9s so uh, that's what we've got I'm quite happy with that I'm glad to say that the dog clutch interface fits quite beautifully so yeah I'm quite happy with that and um, especially when that just fit on the first time I tried it I was very happy with that so we can do away with this one now we have the arduous task of putting this in and boring it out a little bit more. Getting that concentric with the lathe will be very time consuming and not something which I'm going to put you through.